Alright, welcome back everybody. Thank you for watching another video. So I've had a few people ask me how it is I cut such perfect circles for my coasters. So as you can see, I got three of these. I'm going to make one more to complete my set. So quick update. So here is the fantastic flannel coasters I'm working on. Then we got some uh, fancy script here for this other one. So those are done. And of course we've got kind of a kind of like a four leaf clover chainmail deal. So I got to make one more for this Baroque pattern and I'm going to show you how I cut them. Alright, before we get started, just to let you know if you want to purchase any of the tools including the leather mentioned in this video, make sure you check out the links in the description below. But the leather I'm using is just a simple belly leather that I got from Tandy. You can get these for right around $15. Thickness wise, right around 4 to 6 ounces. And this is what it looks like. It's just veg tan leather. I'm going to stretch this out. And let me see what side I want to use this side. Yeah, let's start on the other side. So I'm going to show you the cutter and it's basically like a compass, but it doesn't matter if you're cutting a circle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's just start right here. But if you're using, you know, stencils like that, or even like a hexagon stencil like this, you would just need like all a scratch all and you trace the designs around it to cut it with the blade but fortunately i got this guy right here and this is essentially how i cut my circles so this little arm slides out if you need to make a larger diameter this guy right here you're going to punch down and there's a soft foot that holds it into place you got to keep constant pressure down and we're going to twist it there's a blade right there that's going to be the cutting it's also a separate storage compartment for other blades. So I'm going to move this over just a little bit more. I can get right down, kind of in that area. All right, and this is the uh, step one in the process. So we're going to hold this down, right down in that area. Okay, that should do it. I'm going to hold it down with my left hand, and we're just going to turn. You can hear it cutting. And once it stops making that sound, you're gonna know it's through. Oh, here, quiet. Oh. Still a little bit more. Oh, right there. Okay, on the left side. All right, that sounds. Oh, okay. Maybe one more turn. All right, that's got it. And that's step one. All right, let me show you what I'm gonna do next. All right, the next step I want to do is take away this kind of mushroom effect here because when you cut, the edges kind of split out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is take this edge beveler and just follow it around to trim off that edge. Edge bevelers basically give your edges a nice finish. So I'm going to come down in here, and just kind of take it off like that. And go right around. All right, you can see a nice little beveled edge now. And it's going to turn it around and do the same thing on the bottom. All right, I got both sides now done with the edge beveler. What I'm going to do now is just get a little bit of water. I'm going to wet this down to make this soft, and I'm going to run it through the embosser. I'll be right back. I'll show you what it's going to look like. All right, and here is the finished product once running it through the embosser machine I'm using. It's basically the Vagabond 2, and I had to mess around with a couple of pieces of cardstock to get it to the right height. But basically, you can case your leather for different types of project differently. For here, from what I'm doing, all I did was made the top damp and I ran it through. Because if I get it too wet, when it's going through the rollers, it'll stretch it out. And it's going to look a little bit maybe uneven sometimes as an oval. Uh, and as you can see, it actually compressed a little bit, but not so much that the circle is deformed. But that's how you get the embossing on there. Let's do the uh, edge work next. All right, before beginning to burnish the edges, we gotta smooth that out a little bit. So I normally start with 220 grit paper and then I'll just start sanding around like this. And then of course I'll go to the 400, sand it down. And then for the coasters, I'll go up to an 800 and then I'll stop. If I was doing like a wallet or something like that, I might get it up to something like a thousand or two thousand. So let me work on that and I'll show you what's next. Alright, before getting into the actual wood burnishing, what I want to do is coat the top here 
with a couple of coats of neat's foot oil and that's going to make it change color so i have a little bit on my applicator here and we're just going to start to rub it in circular motions like that and just work it around i'm going to let it sit and dry and probably coat it a few more times and then I'll be ready to start burnishing the edges. And I'll show you what that looks like. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, so here's what we look like now after about three coats of Neat's Foot Oil as compared to that, right? So all I'm doing is using the oil to darken the leather. So they have antiquing oil, which will darken the leather a lot quicker and give you a lot darker result. But what I'm trying to do is figure out a way to do that without potentially dropping the dye all over the place because I'm going to be doing it inside of a van when I'm on the road and I don't want to deal with any of that. And Neat's Foot Oil, I think, has been the best performer as compared to like the Leather Bomb, which we're going to be finishing the edges with. Now, the order that I'm doing this in, it doesn't really matter. I prefer to take care of the face first and then do my burnishing on the edges because I don't want to get any of the product from the edges onto the face because it's going to cause splotching on the outside. So. We're going to take care of these edges next. So we're going to start with a quick water burnish. So just, just water here. I'm just going to take my finger and just run it around the side. And then we're going to use a wood burnisher or a wood slicker to kind of shine up those edges. All right, so once that's done, here's my wood slicker, leather slicker. And I'm going to fit it right down in here. And what this is gonna do is shine up the edges so that instead of it looking bare like that, it'll look like this. It'll have a nice shine and finish to it. And this is the first step. Now I do have a set of Dremel bits coming in so that I can just put it on the edge of my Dremel or rotary tool, whatever you have, and it makes this process a lot faster. So. Let me finish this off and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll get the leather balm out and finish up the edges here. All right, so this is what we look like after the water burnish as compared to an unfinished edge. So next what we're gonna do is finish it up with some leather balm, this product right over here with uh, autumn wax like that, it's neutral colored. And that's what I have on this swab right here. And I'm just gonna lightly coat this, just kind of stripe it ever so gently right across there. Right down, move it along, keep it going. And then I gotta let it dry for a while and I'll show you what that looks like after we're done. And then we'll be finished with the edges. And uh, the last step will be kind of sealing the back with some tokenol just to make sure that these fuzzies lay down. So uh, let me let this sit, I'll be right back. All right, looking pretty shiny there compared to where it started off. Look at the difference, right? So beautiful. Right? Next step is to seal up the back end and I'm gonna be using tokenol for this and you can use whatever you'd like to. But I noticed it just seems to give it a certain stiffness that I like for my coaster. And sometimes I'll just kind of dip my two fingers in here. Some people use spatulas to kind of even it up. But all I'm gonna do is just kind of start spreading it around. Right, like that. Really massage it in there. Get it right out. Two fingers right here. Start with it right in that area. And then what I'm gonna do is get my burnisher, my glass burnisher out, and just kind of smash down the edges just to try to have those fibers lay down all in the same direction. Try to catch the edges here. Should be enough. That should be set. And move this out of the way. I'm just gonna push it out. Switch it the other direction. way. 
right, now that that's done, we just uh, let it sit. And if I feel like I want to darken this up a little bit, maybe I will put one more coat on it. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to let it sit, and then I'll show you what the four coasters look like at the ending of the day. All right, guys, so we went from that to something that now looks like that. That is the finished product. Again, we can see how we burnish the sides. Nice polished finish. And that's how you do it. So remember, if you want to purchase anything mentioned in this video, make sure you check out the links in the description below. I haven't listed these for sale yet, but remember, we got this kind of Baroque pattern. We got this fancy script pattern. Like that. Fantastic plaid going on. Uh, as well as this crazy four-leaf kind of chainmail design. Well, alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.